Nowadays, everyone carries around a phone. In the current age we live in, it's such a critical device to help people stay connected with each other and manage their everyday tasks. It's hard to even imagine leaving the house without it. But there wouldn't be modern-day smartphones if it weren't for Alexander Graham Bell, a Scottish-born scientist and inventor. In August 1876, he made demonstrations of his new device that would unknowingly change the way people communicated all over the world. Today on Feed My Curiosity, we'll take a look at how the telephone was created. We'll start by briefly looking at what existed before the telephone, then looking at Bell's breakthrough, his demonstrations, and how the use of the telephone grew across North America. Let's find out more today on Feed My Curiosity. If you watched our History of Wireless Transmission video, you may remember that forms of communication existed before the telephone, such as smoke signals, messenger pigeons, and the telegraph. The telegraph allowed people to electronically transmit messages over long distances with the use of Morse code, as well as demonstrating that communication over two different continents was possible when the transatlantic cable was laid between England and America over the Atlantic Ocean. Perhaps the earliest form of the telephone was invented in 1672 by Robert Hooke, which was known as the world's first acoustic telephone. He discovered that sound can travel over a wire or a string connected by two mouthpieces. One, two, three, four, five. What did I say? Over. Okay, uh, if uh, anybody would like to call over. If one person speaks into one mouthpiece, the other person can hold their mouthpiece to their ear and be able to hear what the other is saying. In comes Alexander Graham Bell, born on March 3, 1847, in Edinburgh, Scotland. By the 1860s, he was inventing ways to use electrical current to make sound travel. By the year 1870, he and his family moved to Canada, first in Paris, Ontario, then in Brantford, Ontario, in a house called the Melville House, where he set up a new lab and continued his experiments there. This is where he had a major breakthrough. In 1876, he was able to transmit sound by vibrating a needle in water, causing electrical current to change. He had demonstrated this by saying the words, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you, to Thomas Watson, Alexander's assistant, who was listening in another room with the same device. Although there were other inventors such as Alicia Gray and Antonio Meucci who came up with very similar inventions, the U.S. Patent Office decided to award the patent to Alexander Graham Bell. In August 1876, he held a series of demonstrations in front of audiences. The first demonstration took place on August 3rd between the Melville House and the A. Wallace Ellis store in Mount Pleasant, which was the first one-way call between himself and his uncle, David Charles Bell. He was in his home in Mount Pleasant reciting Hamlet specifically the passage, to be or not to be. The second call took place the next day, from the telegraph office in Brantford to the Melville House, where a large dinner party consisting of speeches and music were broadcasted. The third and final call took place between the Melville House and Paris, Ontario, in which Alexander Graham Bell called Thomas Watson. With the call being around 16 kilometers away, this would be the world's first ever long-distance call. Alexander attempted to sell the patent to Western Union, the world's biggest communication company at the time, for $100,000, Western Union declined, thinking that his telephone invention wouldn't amount to anything. Unfortunately for them, as you would have guessed, they couldn't have been more wrong. With Alexander keeping the patent to himself, he entered his telephone into the market and saw great success. In the next couple of years, the first telephone line and switchboard were constructed. Mobile calls are received on antennas like this. Then they are carried to the receiver. From the receiver, they go by telephone wires to the control terminal, then to the central office switchboard and thereafter being handled as ordinary calls. The return part of the call goes back to the central office, then back through the control terminal where it is automatically switched to the transmitter. Then it goes out through the transmitting antenna and the call is on the air again. And by 1880, roughly 50,000 telephones were being used. Seeing that they've lost out mightily, Western Union attempted to come up with a series of inventions that were better than the telephone. They hired Thomas Edison, who was known to improve on existing patent systems. One of his inventions was a telephone transmitter that allowed voices to be transmitted louder and with more clarity over standard telephone lines. An unimpressed Alexander Graham Bell took them to court, and they eventually settled on an agreement, which involved Western Union pulling out of the telephone market. 
By 1885, Bell had formed a telephone system which involved the merging of multiple telephone companies and became known as the American Telegraph and Telephone Company, or AT&T as they're known today. The number of telephone users under the system just continued to grow and grow. By 1900, there were around 600,000 users, 2.2 million users by the year 1905, and by 1910, around 5.8 million. It's hard to say exactly how many phones exist today, whether they're in the form of landline or mobile phones, but it's safe to say almost every person, and certainly every business, has some kind of phone for communication. It's also tough to say where we'd be if it weren't for Alexander Graham Bell fiddling around in his lab trying to figure out ways to make sound travel, but we have him and other eager inventors to thank for something we carry around just about everywhere and use every second. Do you remember your first mobile phone? Do you remember the brand? And does your home still use a landline? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us today on Feed My Curiosity. Take care.